So a little bit of story time. How about astrological story time? Today is the last day of winter. It is March 19th, and it seems that that seems a little off. But because it was a leap year, the sun is going to go into Aries a little bit earlier. That's a whole other conversation in itself, but I wanted to wish everybody an early happy spring equinox. This occurs at 11.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in America. Where you are, it might be a little bit different. So um, when it reaches you, or if it already has reached you, well, happy spring equinox. Winter is over. And uh, the sun is about to slip into Aries, which makes things really exciting being in the environment we're in right now, where everyone's kind of bunkered down and uh, stuck on staycations in their homes, working from their homes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I guess maybe it's because I'm an Aquarius. I think this is all a little exciting, except for the death and illness going around. That's not exciting. But seeing how this is going to play out is rather exciting. And the whole idea and concept of um, having to stay home and chill out and just reset. It's kind of cool. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about was the sun going into Aries, marking the spring equinox. We have a whole entire new season ahead of us. And it looks like uh, <laughs> we're going to be spending it in very small groups or isolation. But either way, we can still celebrate the sun coming into Aries and uh, hopefully that uh, energy and warmer weather, depending on if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or not, will help us out with this uh, little issue we're having with a virus going around. Now, I'm not mocking it and I'm not downplaying it, but trying to keep light of the situation and uh, make the best of it. Stay proactive, everybody. If the sun in Aries is going to inspire us to do anything, I think it's gonna inspire us to be proactive and gung-ho. Now, there's another astrological phenomenon happening on Saturday that really got my attention because I came across it by accident because being an Aquarius and talking to other Aquarii friends and people I know, we've been facing this uh, growing pains frustration. I feel like the way I did when I was 12 and I don't understand why I just feel cranky and grouchy at times and uh, growing pains and there's no way to ever really define growing pains, is there? It's just a thing we have to go through and it's uncomfortable and it's personal and you know, you can't really articulate it. And then I accidentally, well by fate, stumbled upon the Saturn is moving from Capricorn into Aquarius. Now, Saturn has spent the last two and a half years in Capricorn, his, his home, that's the guiding star of Capricorn is Saturn. And Saturn used to be the original guiding star of Aquarius before Uranus was discovered and through the zodiac and astronomy and astrology off kilter for a moment until they readjusted and found a place for him. But Saturn coming into Aquarius for the next two and a half years is going to be interesting because it's defined as a new renaissance. Now, I don't know if we're looking at symbols like plagues and, you know, pandemics to uh, be the renaissance we want, but it is during these kind of moments where we have to decide to come together and reset, like I just said, and reformat. So it seems kind of uh, in lieu. I look at astrology as a giant clock and it's always telling us what time it is. Whether you're a believer in astrology that the energies of the planets have a focus on Earth and vice versa, or if you think it's psychological or it's a spiritual event, there's many different schools of astrology. I'm not going to be here to dissect every single one of them. That's not my thing, but um, talk about it from my point of view and hopefully some of the things I say will resonate with you or you can metaplay it and contemplate it later and see where it fits in and how it plays out. But to me, I look at it as a big clock. So Saturn coming into a sign like Aquarius is really putting the kibosh on and the end of uh, outdated ways of thinking. But it's also going to come into an Aquarius and say, chaos cannot be had, enough is enough. When Saturn comes into a sign like Aquarius, it would be easy to think he's going to let loose and be free. He's not going to let loose and be free. He's actually going to come into clean house and, uh, you know, that big sickle that's his astrological glyph or the scythe that you always see Saturn depicted with in art, whether it's uh, paintings or statues, is, you know, kind of coming to bring the end of certain things. Out with the old and in with the new. 
And it seems that whenever we have these big world issues, world pandemics, world wars, um, world renaissances, it's, it's a marked time. We remember this. And we're in marked times right now, and it's rather exciting and interesting. So uh, some of the things that occur with Saturn going into Aquarius is that he won't be there for long on around... Hold on, i got to look at my notes. Forgive me. It's been a trying couple of days, and I'm doing a bunch of things here at the shop behind the scenes. Let's see. Well... July, Saturn will be in Aquarius from March 20th, 21st until July 1st. And then it retrogrades back into Capricorn, which is okay. We could use that because Saturn coming all the way through a sign like Aquarius would be a little too overwhelming and a little too uh, abrupt. So going back into Capricorn, slowing his speed, regaining some composure, and then coming back into Aquarius in December, December 17th, to be exact, 2020, right at the end of the year, uh, will be good. But we might actually see a sequel to what we're seeing now, health-wise, towards the end of the year, somewhere in that late fall, early, early winter phase. Who knows? Hopefully it's not going to be as bad as this. But we'll see. We'll see. Things will die down, and then things will pick up. But... The thing that becomes interesting is that Saturn and Jupiter have a conjunction on December 21st at zero degrees Aquarius. Now, sure, I'm saying all of that, but what the hell does that mean? That becomes that new era. I'm not going to go with traditional astrology descriptions of this because you can read that anywhere on the internet. I'm just going to go from my point of view and observation. But I always explain to people that Saturn is old money. You know, like the old staunch grandfather who, you know, was the custodian of the estate and the family business. And through his sweat and broken back, the family after that had everything they wanted. Jupiter is kind of like the sons or daughters that inherit all of that good fortune. So they never really had to work too hard. They had to work to maintain what they have, but they didn't really have to uh, sacrifice the way Saturn did. So they know how to spend the money. And they know how to go with the times where the old money is kind of like, nope, we got to do it the old fashioned way. We got to work real hard. It's always got to be this. But the Jupiters are like the new CEOs, the new companies, the new conglomerates we see. And it's interesting because just yesterday I saw that Apple wanted to buy Disney for $4 billion. Isn't that what Disney bought Star Wars for? Didn't Star Wars kind of flop? Hmm. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but... It's an interesting example to think about and go research on your own and, uh, you know, see what you discover. So, with Jupiter and Saturn uh, having this conjunction, and a conjunction in astrology is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful aspect that can be had because it's when these two planets seem to be right in the same spot with each other and their, their powers combine, so to say. And... Uh, uh, this hasn't happened in a couple of hundred years. Forgive me. My, my notes are a little botched up and uh, I'm, I'm trying to make a point and not make this boring and dry like a class. But it also marks the new season, so to say, astrologically. Because we go from an earth season to an air season where thought now will be more productive. Where we've seen in the last couple of younger generations, material-driven, uh, hardcore, even though a lot of the young generations say they are so anti the establishment and the material, they grew up in an era where they were completely dominated by the establishment and totally sold on things. Uh, it's not bad, it's not good, it's just every generation has a different uh, set of pros and cons and you know challenges and rewards. Just using this as an example. Now it's going to shift again. So the younger generation below, maybe millennials, maybe like the little kids, like 10 years old now, will be growing into an age where the material things that once excited millennials are common space. Just like when people like us 
were born into the world and TVs and telephones were kind of here, we just kind of took it for granted. It wasn't until the cordless phone came out that my generation was excited because we can hide them under our beds and talk on the phone at night when we weren't supposed to like I did. Or when cell phones came out. I'm not even talking about the iPhone, I'm talking about the little Nokia brick that you can talk for one minute and then get charged $20. And how that evolved into something like the smartphone. So. You know, uh, you could see where we really fell in love with our gizmos and gadgets. They, they were very exciting. They were very different. You know, people went from having home computers, which looked like, you know, you needed a whole small shrine to put a monitor and a keyboard and a tower in, to having computers in our back pockets now. And some people take for granted and let them smash on the floor and their parents will buy them new ones. I unfortunately was not that lucky. I have to pay for my own. But that's another example. The next generation is going to be all of thought. These devices are going to become more of a way for uh, thought, transmitting thought. It's just going to be commonplace. It's just going to be in the background. And, um, you know, so now we got this mix of all generations. This generational nonsense of millennials hating boomers and whoever's below millennials hating Gen Xers, that this is all nonsense and this has got to end. This is just people looking for reasons to point the finger at someone else. And we can't blame one whole generation for nonsense, like Gen Xers hating hippies. This is all stupid. This has to be put away. And it seems to be that with this Aquarius conjunction occurring with Saturn and Jupiter, this is the time for all new thinking. And I don't think this pandemic is going to be the be all end all. They said this with 9-11. They probably said this with Pearl Harbor. They probably said this when they dropped the atomic bomb. And the world really never went into this transcendent golden age that all the new agers are looking for. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. No offense to those of you who do, maybe that day will come and I'll be wrong and I'll be happy to be wrong about it. So far I don't see it coming. But with these conjunctions, they're powerful. The other stars will be having different conversations with them as well too, but that will be for another video. Now, the current Earth cycle will end on December 20th and a new elemental cycle will begin on December 21st in the element of air. It does become big, it becomes exciting. It will be a new era, we will feel it. And I'm not talking just transcendental shifts and consciousness and uh, that kind of stuff. I'm talking in society. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it will be quite recognizable. I don't know what that is. Maybe I'll look more into my astrology charts and find out what some of the things from the past were created to see what's going to be created for this new era. But just catching you up with some astrological forecasting, yes. Tonight at 11.50 p.m., the sun goes into Aries in America in the eastern seaboard in the eastern time. And well, that's where I am. And then on Saturday, we have this exciting uh, Saturn entering Aquarius until July 1st, retrograding back into Capricorn, then coming back late fall, early winter. And... Um, so mark your calendars and see what's going on with this. Eh, that's about it now. I'm going to get back to uh, mixing up and making some more aromatherapy candles for the shop here. And um, uh, I hope you're all well. Stay safe and enjoy your time in. Ciao.